Hello and welcome, RC Shim in the hangar. Today I will be testing the triple play from FXT technology. It's a triversity video receiver with three antenna inputs rather than the two antenna inputs that you have on normal diversity receivers. I want to test in this video if it's an advantage, if it's worth upgrading from the FR632 or something similar to a triversity system, how they compare in the same situations. Let's say if they both only have two antennas working, is the newer better or is it just an additional option to have three antennas? This is what the triple play looks like. Three SMA antenna ports. I like this. I don't like RP SMA. Three AV outs and one triversity out. And one power port here. And two function buttons. You can of course mount three different antennas. Of course having three omnidirectional antennas doesn't make a whole lot of sense. For example, I would use two very directional antennas. Those are two 14 dB. They have around 65 degrees of vertical field of view. So combined I have 130 degree, which is really nice. And the Pagoda is here for 360 coverage in around one to two kilometers. Or we use a patch in the center as well and go wider. So you have a really wide coverage. No need for a antenna tracker at all. As you see, I'm powering it here with a fat LiPo. It can use two cell, up to six cell batteries. It comes with this nice XT60 plug. On the side you see three single ports from the three receivers if you want to access them directly or the triversity port which of course is the recommended port to use the power port down here is some molex kind on connector but yeah you should be good with using this xt60 plug and the cable that comes with it is a small headphone jack it's a two point something mil, not the three mil headphone jack, not directly a standard cable. And on the other side you have chinch connectors. Yellow for video, red for audio, for only single channel audio. You also see that I use a small tripod, so it has a tripod mount on the bottom. Let's take a closer look in the menu. Of course you can switch channels by short pressing, by long pressing you can switch the bands. It has a lot of channels and bands. I cut this out of the manual. Six bands, each eight channels. It's weird, the C band here is from 5.3 GHz to 6 GHz. Not so often to be seen. R is the raise band, F is the fetch arc band that I normally use. Stores the channel and band selection that you last used. It does an auto search if you long press the function button. The search function doesn't find it very accurately. 5665. Six, six, Auto scan function is nice if you don't know on which channel you are. If you have a clue, better go there manually. You see, you see three bars here, which uh, show you the reception quality of the individual receivers. Yeah, and then you can just press the function and turn on or off the individual receivers by long pressing. So now I have only this. That doesn't make much sense. Of course, normally you always want all the three on. If you do nothing for five seconds, it will jump out. Other than this, there are no menu settings, no fancy voltage alarms or something. Pretty, pretty basic menu. It's an OLED, that's why it flickers that much on camera. Yeah, and on this side here you have the power switch, which is nice. It doesn't have an included battery or something, it's just switching off or on the power board. whole device is rather small. This in comparison is FR632 I normally use. Of course it has to be a bit larger because it has one more receiver. The build quality, it's a bit cheap, it's plastic but it should be fine. Buttons work and connectors are nice and sturdy. And I really enjoy the, the tripod mount here. 
on my FR632 I had to glue on this tripod thingy here to have a tripod mount. So including a tripod mount is really a good idea. First test, both receivers on one linear polarized antenna in single receiver mode. Now I'll be flying using the fetchucks. So on the fat chucks I really have perfect image still. I will try one round the usual garden scenario here. And now the image starting to get ugly on the fat chucks. Curious to see how the two receivers work. I'll try to stay consistent with this route. Swap batteries now. We have some wind. What a landing, yeah? <laughs> okay, second test flight. Both receivers now have two linear polarized antennas. And on the Triversity I have only two ports enabled. Should be a fair comparison. First a long straight down the hallway. With the sketchy turnaround. Coming back. This is a better battery, by the way. And the green round. Yeah, it's, it's flyable with the diversity module in the fat chucks. Nice, nice. Fighting, still fighting the wind. Ah! Now the Triversity has three linear polarized antennas versus the two on the FR632. And I have better reception with the FedChuck module now. Really curious to see later, you see it already now, how much difference between linear antennas. So, it's time to reveal the secret. On the right side we have the Triversity and on the left side the FR632. Those two receivers are wired to those two monitors and the FedJack goggles I'm using have a pagoda and a patch and I'm looking outside with the patch so I have quite good reception with this here. Curious to see what this can give us. Diversity versus Triversity with proper antennas. During the next crash, I think it's where the Triversity first shined here. It's the only one with good reception while standing on the ground so far away. I like how you see the OLED display of the Triversity here and also the RSSI signal bars of the three antennas. And here you see how often it actually switches and during the switches you don't notice any video glitch, so it's quite good at switching between antennas. Maybe one prop is bent a bit. I have no power forward. 
Uh, hope to come back alive. Man, this is sketchy. Ah, and the wind. It's almost impossible to come into my door here. Man. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, one more test. I have a 10 dB attenuator here and the linear polarized antenna. Let's see in these more extreme conditions how the two receiver units differ. Just two flights because I only have one attenuator. An attenuator just reduces the amount of antenna gain you get. The 10 dB attenuator here. I turned off the other two receivers. Get a bit of an external shot here. Well, here in this extreme test with the minus 10 dB attenuator, I don't see that much of a difference. In some cases, the one is better than the other, but I don't see that they differ that much and it's not a totally accurate test since these were two flights after each other. So not totally the same conditions. Okay, so how do I like this triple play receiver? Well. I've used FR632 for some years now and I really like it being so small. The kind of reception quality it has is cool. Two ports opened it up for me to have one directional and one omni. Sometimes I use two directional and worked quite nice for me for long range flight situations. So I was wondering and that's how I got in touch with FXT. They asked me if I want to review some of their stuff and I found this receiver to, be, to look interesting. For me it was a new option to have the possibility to use three antennas at once. And I think that's the whole point of this. In direct comparison with the 632 here, if you use the same amount of antennas and the same antennas, it performs kind of the same. So it doesn't have more sensitivity or better reception quality but it has one more antenna port and that's the point I guess. So for you long range guys you can use three directional antennas or as I show it here with two directional and one omni which is a really good all around solution. For proximity flyers, for close range flyers I don't think having three omnis in different setup makes that much of a difference to have only two of them. So don't expect this to be much of an advantage on, on the races or in park flying. I think a diversity is, is more than enough here. If you have high gain antennas, usually the beam width is really narrow. So if you point only one antenna in this direction, the area where you can go is kind of tiny. If you have three of these high gain antennas and combine them next to each other you have three times the horizontal uh, range at least and it gives you really really good reach. These are kind of medium medium gain antennas with 40 dB they can give you a lot of range but they have 65 degree of horizontal and vertical beam width so three times 65 it's almost 200 degrees field of view, horizontal, vertical only 65, keep that in mind of course. Yeah, you could co combine it with one uh, 90 degree patch on pointing in the back side. The standard question is if you have goggles with, uh, diversity, with two receivers, I think this is one of the best situations for most of my flying because I have this 8 dBi gain 90 degree antenna here and this Omni on this side and with this combination I'm super mobile I don't have to put up, up, up a ground station it is suitable for most of my copter flying 
If I want to fly long range with planes, I rather have a ground station, which is a permanent installation. It doesn't move. It's always pointed in the direction that you set it up and get better long range experience. Okay, so thank you very much for viewing this video. Hope you liked it. Leave me your comments. Leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you found it to be a shitty review. But if you thumb down, please let me know why. Make sure to subscribe if you didn't. And I will be posting one video a week in 2018 as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.